What would you do if you got injured on the road and you could no longer travel? That's every RVer's biggest fear. Well, I am living my worst nightmare right now. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing, and these are exciting times to push through fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And I'm definitely being challenged right now to push through fear and face up to what is happening. So one of my biggest fears, and I'm sure every solo RVer shares this fear, is what do you do if you're traveling the country, you're out on the road, and you get injured, and you find that you cannot do this anymore, that you can't live this life because you're not capable physically because of the injury. And that's exactly what I'm going through right now. My hand is broken in three places. I can't, I can't bend my hand. Just getting dressed, it took me like 15 minutes to put my contacts in. I mean, this is a huge challenge and it is my biggest fear. This week's video was supposed to be about e-bikes and about doing a test ride and all that. And I hope to bring that to you someday, but life is happening right now. So what's happening with me right now is I'm trying to deal with this and I'm out here solo on the road. I'm nowhere near, I'm 3000 miles from my hometown. And so I was test riding an e-bike and you know what? Those bikes are heavy. And if you've ridden a regular bike, you know that to get the seat high enough, generally you're on tippy toes. Well, if a bike is 65 pounds and the rider weighs about 125, which is what I weigh, something's gonna happen if the bike gets tippy. And what happened was the bike fell over and landed on my hand. My hand is broken uh, a couple of places here and, and right here. So I'll be splinted for eight weeks. As it happens, I am in an area that is entering peak season. So it's not a question of being able to stay in place. A couple months ago, I tried to add an extra week to where I am now, and they said, no way. You know, it's really getting into high, high use. I have a full schedule all the way through winter, but I don't know that I can do it. I don't know that I'm physically capable. So this is definitely a big challenge right now. So I'm just going to take a deep breath. You know, life does happen wherever you are. If I was living in a sticks and bricks in a regular house, breaking my hand would be a problem, but it wouldn't be near as the big problem out here. I would have friends and neighbors and people that would support me. And plus I wouldn't have to do all the physical things that are required for setting up, breaking camp, hitching and unhitching. If I'm living in a house or apartment, I can just chill out and relax. I might, you know, take time off work or have people come over and bring me food, but it's a whole different thing on the road. It's a very, very physical life and I need to have all parts of me working to keep living this life. Well, if you have ever broken your hand or your wrist or have had surgery on those areas, you know what a challenge it is to try and do things with one hand. Just day-to-day -day ordinary tasks become much, much more difficult and you have to learn creative ways to do things that you never even thought about. It takes, you know, having patience with yourself and, and really uh, being creative in, in, in getting things done. So you think, okay, well, all right, I'm basically doing things with one hand, so it's going to take twice as long, right? Oh, no, no, no. It takes many, many times longer to do a task that maybe took 10 seconds, could easily take a minute. There definitely is a reason why we were given two hands. I mean, I'm so grateful that my hand is going to heal and that I don't have to live like this permanently, but it's still an adjustment because it seems like everywhere I turn, everything I try to do is something that is a challenge. I've got to learn a new way to do it. 
lighting the stove, oh my goodness, for a long minute there, I thought I was not going to be able to cook. But I figured out, you know, it is a two-handed process, and I can't use my left hand to turn the igniter. But, so I had to kind of figure out how was I going to do this? How was I going to turn the gas on and then actually get it to light? And I did figure it out. I have three moves I'm scheduled to make between now and when the splint comes off in eight weeks. So that means setting up and tearing down each time. Not only is it way, way slower using one hand, but my splinted hand keeps wanting to help, but it can't. Still, I'm worried about injuring it and slowing down the healing. Honestly, it's exhausting and challenging enough with two hands, let alone one. The sewer hose is just about a deal breaker. It, there's knobs on the connection where I have to line it up and then turn it. It takes both hands for me to really grip it and to get it locked in to my outlet. Then I usually take a mallet with one hand and my other hand to get it off because it really locks in there. So yeah, I could ask a neighbor to help me dump Hi, you don't know me, would you like to dump for me? And I guess people would say yes, but it would take a lot of, I don't know what, courage to say, do you mind dumping for me? And that only solves the situation here, leaving the camp. It doesn't really help me over the next eight weeks. So that right there is a big stress. So I call my 50 amp hose the Anaconda. It is huge and really, really heavy. To plug it in and unplug it, it takes one hand to line it up exactly right. It's really heavy. The other hand either locks it on or unlocks it. I it could probably take it off with one hand, but I don't think I could line up this part because it's so heavy with one hand and still spin this lock. I decide to try it just so I can find out exactly what I can and cannot do. I just passed my one year anniversary of solo RVing on the road. I'm really proud of that accomplishment. I'm proud of my independence and everything that I have learned and been able to do in the past year. I really don't want to have to ask for help. I want to be able to do it myself. I can't, I can't bend my hand. I can't hardly drive. I mean, I can't imagine driving my rig. And I'm glad I can share it with you because already I'm learning that I do need an emergency plan. Anyone who is on the road or being solo needs a plan. You need to think about what if, what if you get injured? What if you get sick? What if something happens and maybe there's an emergency with a family member and you need to leave your rig? I would absolutely welcome you to leave in the comments what your emergency plans are or give some ideas. What this has taught me is that we need each other. Nobody gets through life alone. We all need a helping hand sometime. So there's a camping friend that I met on the road. We were neighbors for two weeks. When I told him what happened, he is going to come and help me and even drive my rig. If you want to know more about how I overcome obstacles, in the next video, I deal with an emergency roadside repair.